بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم عطی الله عطی رسول و اول الامر منکم and always a reminder for myself and abdukullah jisa zahifa wa miskin wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence a reminder from last night that we talked about the goal to reach Allah's rida and satisfaction and to enter into the Divinely Presence and the Divinely Presence enter within us and to make the house and the heart of the believer the house of Allah in which Allah's lights and Divinely grace to emanate from that heart and that's why Allah throughout Qur'an is describing the Kaaba that to wash your heart clean your heart and circumambulate your heart, my house, the Kaaba. And that's why we call awliyaullah qiblas in Kaaba, that their hearts are like a Kaaba in which direct people towards the Divinely Presence and a Qibla that they give a direction and a focus in life. And to reach towards that reality that is the ultimate goal, Dati Allah. And because Allah knows that we're weak and if you live a thousand lives you won't be able to achieve that without this system that Allah has put in place. They may have belief to a lesser degree, they may have a love to a lesser degree. But to enter into that Divinely light then Allah has a system in which to reach the haqqaiqs of La ilaha illallah. So then he gives then, Wa ati Rasul that I know that you can't follow me because that's the station of the messengers of Allah So follow the love and the way of your beloved messenger, beloved by Allah most praised within creation of Allah the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad which is Muhammadu Rasulullah So then they come awliyaullah and begin to describe that our goal was to reach and make our house a Kaaba. Then the only one who can bring the law and the discipline of Allah the deen of Allah the message of Allah is Muhammadu Rasulullah because this defines in this science of reality. So we want to reach Allah, we want our house to be the Kaaba and we want Allah's Divinely lights to be emanating from our heart. This is what every believer wants. And the turuqs that Allah has sent are the schools of guidance. When Allah says, there is no guidance except if Allah guides. And that has many degrees of guidance. Allah guides people to something basic, something middle, something high and something very high. Means there's all these darajats of guidance and realities of guidance. And the highest is Maqam al-Mahmud, Jannat al-Firdaus, Jannat al what are all the highest paradises you can imagine? They're all within the reality in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad All of that that Allah want to bestow upon the believer then gives to us Satya Rasul. And only Allah because this now defines that their whole teaching is going to be about Muhammadun Rasulullah so that the heart can be perfected, the heart can have that Divinely character that Allah wants. Because if you bring the light of Prophet Allah describes in Qur'an that Prophet is a guidance, he brings the message, he purifies the believers, he brings all these lights and blessings into the heart of the believer. So Allah wants that if you want my real love, my pure love then follow the love and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad to 
to bring and to make the heart Muhammadiyoon and all its infinite realities and that's why then they teach about all the haqqaiqs and the realities and everything about Muhammadun Rasulullah of haqqaiqs and haqiqatan Muhammadiyah. So then the door to that reality, how are you going to find that reality? By picking up a book. So these are then the real ulul amri minkum. There are again levels of ulul amr. If somebody is a president in this earth, he's ulul amr. Allah gave that authority, even if he's an oppressor, Allah gave that authority. You have dunya ulul amr that they follow what Allah has written for them and they don't even know it then they don't have to believe in it. There are the police, the sheriff, the senators, politicians, these are all dunya ulul am. There are people within religions and practices that also they give a guidance. But the ulul amri minkum that Allah is describing these are of a different nature and reality. They understood the alif, meem, ra of amr. They understood and they're dressed by the alif which makes them to have izzatullah. They're dressed with the reality and haqqaiqs of the meem which give them from izzat al rasul, the might and the majesty and authority of Sayyidina Muhammad dressed within them and Izzat al-Mu'mineen. And this is Allah's description of when Allah giving power, it's by virtue of these three realities power is reaching to this earth. They have Izzatullah, Izzat al-Rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen. As a result Allah sends a power, Sayyidina Muhammad agrees with that authority and Prophet sends support and power. And those whom are working for Sayyidina Muhammad they 100% agree and they take that and they send their madad and support. And this is Qur'an when people say, oh we only take from Allah But Allah says, Izzatullah, Izzat al-Rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen. It has to come by its authority onto this earth. Those whom reach that haqqaiq then they have a guidance and a written guidance from that reality that they represent Izzatullah on this earth, they represent Izzat Rasul upon this earth and the awliyaullah have given an authority to that ulul amr. And they represent the authority of awliyaullah upon this earth. Doesn't have to be a spoken one, this is from the unseen world. They don't need somebody to speak something, acknowledge something or deny something. Their authority not coming from this world of form. Authority is coming from Allah and the rijal whom nobody sees and nobody knows. Some may figure and think they know. Majority are unknown, unseen but felt. Means that ulul amr is a door upon this earth. Our life is to find that door. The shaykhs that represent that reality at least can teach that reality, speak about that reality. They're from that door, they're from the ulul am. As a result that door that is established upon this earth at all times Allah will keep guidance upon this earth for the sake of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad He will not leave this earth because of the love for Sayyidina Muhammad Without this awliya and these guides, 
There are some whom may be awliya but they're not given guidance. They all have different jobs and different responsibilities. They may have tabarak and blessing because of what Allah has written for their soul. But the ones whom have been given guidance they inherit from 313 messengers of Allah because Allah gave to them a support through their ears, gave to the shaykh a support through his eyes, gave the shaykh a support through his breath, through his hands and through his feet and gave the son as Siddiq. And Allah says, the greatest gift is hikmah and wisdom and whom inherits the lisan as siddiq al-aliyah. That not only they're siddiq but al-aliyah that they're inheriting from the Most High. Means many, many dresses from Holy Qur'an describe this reality of these awliya and this understanding of these awliyaullah that they are the schools of guidance and they are door upon this earth. When you find that knowledge and you find that door your life is to serve, to enter into that door. When you enter into that door you pray your best never to leave that door. That, Ya Rabbi I enter into this threshold and I pray that I die before I leave it. Ameen. That's why we recite it in the salawat from Ahlul Bayt to die on the path. Not take a path and run from it, it's a path in which we swore to take it, enter into it and die inshaAllah in it that Allah bury us from amongst those whom took that reality. That's why they delineate and explain this understanding. People become confused, is it about a shaykh, is this about this, is about this? We started, no it's about reaching to Allah And Allah is saying, if you want to reach to me, follow Prophet if you want my love fatabiuni follow, follow Sayyidina Muhammad and I will love you. My Divine love will emanate from your heart. People will see God within your eyes and within your being because Allah's Divinely lights emanate within that believer. They see Allah and Allah sees them. This is Maqam al ihsan that Prophet described, worship all your worshipness as if you see Allah and know that Allah sees you. So means this is the goal, the highest level. You live a thousand years and a thousand lifetimes and you won't achieve that without this system because Allah wants you to not come to me, come to Muhammadun Rasulullah So you understand that this, this perfect line of tawheed, the first usul of Islam, the first law of Islamic jurisprudence is the oneness of Allah that we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah You can't say, La ilaha illallah without Muhammadun Rasulullah, you're outside of our belief. So this perfect line that Allah is drawing is that if you want to reach to my La ilaha illallah you must go to Muhammadun Rasulullah So then Allah created these ulul am, destined, wrote for them, dressed them, taught them, blessed them and say, open your door on this earth. So the door must have a tongue in which it teaches, which it trains, which it gives the guidance. And when you enter into that door the description is and should be taught everything about Muhammadun Rasulullah If you entered into a door 
Because if you're watching you still don't know and you're confused, God help you. But if you are confused and you enter somewhere and they talk a lot about Allah, 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 that's not the right room because we just described. This door above it is Muhammadun Rasulullah These ulul am that Allah gave to them to talk, they must be talking correct. And when they talk they should be talking about their king and they should be talking about above them. And above them is for you to reach Muhammadun Rasulullah The one whom doesn't talk about that and talks about Allah, he's cutting it out, he's cutting that reality out. You go into a room and someone just talking about Allah. Uh, what happened? You forgot about Muhammad Rasulullah? Because that's his but shaitan. Shaitan doesn't accept anyone but himself. He says, I don't accept any of these Adams and it's just Allah And Allah doesn't want that and cast him out. So that's how the, the, the student should know that if I enter into a room of these ulul am that are awliya and they've given guidance then their whole wujud because they're moons and the moon only knows about its sun. That's why they're qamarun, that's why they're guidance. The moon is guidance. Prophet described that my companions like stars on a dark night because they guide. And the moon is a, is a tremendous source of guidance, it gives you your time and your coordinates. And then when you study the moon it gives you energies and lights as a reflection from the sun that it follows. So they nourish you, they raise you, read the Farmer's Almanac and what a moon is. As a result of nourishing you, raising you, sending tajallis upon you, everything is about the beautific lights of Muhammadun Rasulullah Shams al Arifin, the sun for all the Gnostic knowers. Because that light that coming from Prophet reflects upon them and makes everything to become rushed and ripened, beautific and sweet. That's why then they teach that reality. So when you go into a room and you don't hear that, they're not from that reality, good, bad, indifference not our opinion but they're not from that reality. They didn't reach to that reality, maybe they're on a path to that reality. But the room that we enter is the room that teaches all about the haqqaiqs and reality and the beatific nature and creation of Muhammadun Rasulullah And they're like rocket ships, you enter into that room because of that love, because of that ishq immediately shooting everybody up into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And all their associations, physical, live, any interaction with them is through that light and that blessing in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because it's the door that Allah wants. They're taught these realities, they're taken to the presence of that reality and then that prophetic light perfects that creation of Allah purifies Haris alaykum bi mu'mineen hu ra'ufun raheem and throughout Qur'an Allah is describing is a, is a guidance for the believer, one whom will teach you, purify you and guide you to Allah How could you not have that room and think that you'd live a thousand lifetimes and you won't reach that level of haqqaiq? So when they enter into that door of these ulul am, they understood that my life is to serve that reality. And when I enter into that reality I should be taught all of these immense lights, immense teachings, immense blessings so that the light enters within my heart. 
So entering into that room, entering into that association is that you want that light to enter within the heart. The light of the shaykh enter into the heart and when the light of the shaykh comes into the heart it comes with what it carries of that reality. That haqqaiq is a pearl and that's why we recite these knots and the knots describe the beautific pearls of reality. Allah doesn't throw these diamonds for shaitans to take. The custodian of these pearls they carry their pearl with them in their wujud and in their being safeguarded by how Allah safeguards them. As a result of allowing that light within your being, the Ya Rabbi kuna ma sadiqeen itaqullah, Allah says, have my consciousness. Wa kuna ma sadiqeen, if Allah doesn't care for the physical world and is guiding Qur'an through all of time and all of creation. And Allah in Qur'an is saying that, have a consciousness, a taqwa in which all your senses fear Allah and keep the company of sadiqs. You think Allah is talking about physical company when Allah doesn't care for the physical world? Allah cares for the soul and the world of light, that which is eternal, why would He care for something that is perishing? But teaching that use your perishing existence to reach to this reality. So these ulul am, they're the sadiqs that Allah is describing that have a consciousness that use and have fear upon your senses because you look and you don't see who they are and you come inappropriate and talk inappropriately to them. You hear but you don't have any understanding of guidance. That's why Allah says, Taqullah, have a consciousness. You have eyes but you don't see who you're in front of because your eyes don't have taqwa. You hear but you're not really hearing them. You hear a few things but you're too busy in your mind trying to say something. So it means your senses and our senses are not in the fear of Allah and that's in the other teachings. That's why when they teach you in Ramadan is you fast with all your senses so that this reality opens, you fast with your eyes, don't look at these bad things. So when you sit and meditate with clean eyes and, Ya Rabbi grab my eyes, my, my outer eye cleanliness and as a result Allah will open your inner eye to be clean. And blessed are those whom Allah open their eyes to be clean because they have a sense and they can sense that this person is holy, this person is loved by Allah this person is loved by Sayyidina Muhammad They have a taqwa and a, and a consciousness on their hearing and they don't want to hear the world, they don't want to hear gossip, they don't want to hear violent and horrible songs. And as a result of not hearing that they hear the angelic whispers of their soul guiding them, inspiring them given isharat that, don't do that, do this, do this. And continuously they're winners not losers because they're listening and have clean ears. Every test that comes they pass by virtue of Allah's blessing upon them, others would call it cheating. But Allah shifts the game in your favour. I'm about to test you very hard and the angels come and inspire you, don't worry be patient it's going to pass. Because inspiration come, isharat come into their hearing and into their heart and every difficulty in life they, they traverse by virtue of that gift that Allah has given. And then it just expands into Divinely knowledges. If you cannot traverse the minefield of dunya how are you going to hear to get the heavenly realm and heavenly knowledges? There's no books, do you see any book in front of anyone? Where is it coming from? Coming from imagination or recorded message that somebody memorized? But when Allah want to give their hearing that your hearing is clean, it's clean 
it begins to make a connection with the reality in the heavenly realm, deep within the Muhammadan heart So it means then all of these by virtue of that Allah sends people to guidance. That these lights begin to come and Allah teaching, keep their company. Keep their company 24 hours a day. When you're sitting and meditating asking that, be with me. Allah said to keep my soul always with you. So then you meditate and contemplate that, let my soul to always be with you. That let your light to come into me, to clean me. And as a result of this love I have for you that I'm listening, I'm following, I'm doing everything that I can, carry my light with you wherever you go. And what Prophet described, that you carry whom you love within your heart. So when you go for hajj everybody doesn't have to come but you carry their love within your heart and when you go as if they're going for hajj with you. Many of the amal that we do, we carry those whom we love within our being. And that's why Allah described, in the heart of all realities, in the heart of Qur'an, fulq al mashkhoom Because the fulq is the heart of the believer. Mashhoon is that it's loaded with energies, loaded with passengers. You be, the hadith for this is, you be with whom you love and whom you love will be with you. So imagine a heart that just picks up motorcycle gangs and corrupt uh, crazy horrible people and your ship just loaded with these people and Allah describing, this is who you be with. Who you surround yourself with, whom you love, whom you want to occupy your heart and your space of the, of the heart with. Allah saying, they're going to then be with you. And that's why Prophet described, you'll be with whom you love, be careful who you love. It's such a precious gift the heart. So when you love these awliya and you love these shaykhs and you give your love by action, your deeds speak stronger than your words. They don't need you to keep typing, I love you, I love you, I love this way, I love that. They, they don't need that, this ridiculous stuff. They need the action of muhabbat and love, be of service. Do something for the tariqah. You understood that they want tahzim and nabi, they want to magnify the glorious status of Sayyidina Muhammad help them to accomplish that. Do what you can as a matter, as a result of doing, serving, participating, you're showing, I love you. And as a result the hadith becomes active within your being. Allah and His Rasul is 100% stamped, it's not my words. If the hadith becomes active, you'll be with whom you love, means what? Allah will take your soul just one atom of it and put it into the heart of the shaykh. You don't have to take you with a suitcase and bring you around everywhere because we don't understand the, the reality of the soul. How huge is the soul? When in khalwa and seclusion they saw their soul come out of their body, they could see themselves holding planets. Because Allah's paradise is unimaginable how large it is. This tiny little earth is not relevant to who we are and the size of our reality. When we understood that when the shaykhs are performing their zikr, performing their practices, their soul comes out. They speak from their soul, they do their zikr from their soul. They pray with their soul, as a result of their soul coming out it touches everyone's soul. And that's why Prophet described, if you meet these qutubs and these awliya, pray two rakahs with them at least in your life. Take two bites with them, take two sips of water with them. Why? 
because these are people whom they operate through their soul and the generosity of their soul is they leave no man and woman behind. Their soul moves and as it moves it picks everyone up because your body may be there but your soul is all around you. And imagine light and how light operates. When the light of the shaykh is moving any light it touches it takes an atom from that light and brings it amongst itself. And they know that whomever Allah sends them to be in the vicinity of Allah wants from their atoms to be on that shaykh's soul. So their ships are catching and putting many realities upon it. And those whom then follow them, not only they're being dressed from the reality of whatever Allah dresses upon the shaykh's soul and what Prophet dresses upon their soul, all that light. Imagine because we don't understand, imagine one night Prophet gives a beautific green light because of an association in his holy presence. As soon as it hits the shaykh's soul that green light it doesn't go only one place because we're greedy in, in the world, you know you get something you want to keep for yourself. That light when it comes it goes entirely through and radiates the entire soul of the shaykh. Whatever atom is upon it, whatever reality Allah put upon it is dressed from that same tajalli, is completely dressed by it. So when that hadith is activated you'll be with whom you love and whom you love will be with you. As soon as you focus, as soon as you practice, as soon as you open your muhabbat and open your heart these tajallis begin to flow and the shaykh will begin to send the fires. Send the fires and the emanation, are you feeling what you've been dressed with yet? That dress that comes to you it didn't come from an orbit nowhere that you understood. It's not just coming randomly, oh wow it was great I felt some, some amazing and I don't know why I felt that. What do you mean you don't know why you felt it? You felt it because you're on the orbit of the shaykh, you're on his ship and whatever his shaykh is, is being dressed with is dressing him. Whatever his shaykh, his shaykh, his shaykh all the way to the sahabi, all the way to Ahlul Bayt, all the way to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and depending upon their darajat which you can understand from the level of their haqqaiqs what type of closeness they have to the presence of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and when Prophet is receiving from Allah at every second there's not even a microsecond in which he's not receiving from Allah Whatever Prophet is receiving Prophet is dispersing, ana qasim. This was not the, to disperse cash on this earth. When Prophet is describing his names, ana qasim, I'm the one who distributes my soul to the entire created universe. I distribute Allah's tajallis, I distribute all of its haqqaiq and all of its sustenance. Whatever anything is to be received and to be given, it's given through the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So imagine then these lights and beatific tajallis, not just the coordinates of what you have to make of rizq. That's why people want to be with them to be in the association with them, to grow with them, to be dressed from lights and powers from them. And we described in the Ramadan talks when Allah describes these shaykhs they're qadri shaykhs, they've been dressed from Laylatul Qadr and Allah says, every night of theirs is like a thousand months, 87 years every night, 30 nights in one month was almost 2500, 2500, 2600 years in one month. That's why I said if you lived lifetimes you would never reach this reality. That coming across one wali, you lived a lifetime, two lifetimes, a hundred lifetimes 
You don't reach that reality by you just sitting and making your salah and, and, and you go for Jummah and go home, you go for Jummah and you go home. Allah describing whom we give in a light, we have given a light. Whom has no light can receive no light. Means in these levels of haqqaiqs what Allah dressing upon this reality, dressing upon these souls, immense lights. And at every moment being dressed, 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 that's why when the ships come by it picks up everything and puts it upon and dresses it, dresses it. And they don't go physically. Now via broadcast they go to thousands of homes. You merely look at them their soul comes into the room. They don't need to be physical, it's not something of a physical nature. You merely look at them and you're cooling upon their soul, their soul is present in that association, in that room, wherever the person is looking at them. The soul of that reality of that shaykh is present. As a result of being present it again carries everything. So then when they're training, make your tafakkur. You're in, in one of these rooms, make your connection so that you can begin to receive what you've been dressed with. And once you begin to develop that love, the admiration and respect that is the strongest bond. This is not a bond by your head and we convince you by your head. This is that when your love and your atom loves that reality it locks onto that reality. As a result of locking onto it your connection is much stronger, much faster. Versus what emanates through the vastness of their soul like on a ship. You can be a ship on the, on the ship on the outside passenger or you be on the ship but you be from the inner reality of that ship. And that's the same reality they have for Sayyidina Muhammad We want to only know about Prophet or you want to have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad That's why we're describing. When we understood the door, if we can't connect with the shaykh then how are you going to connect with Prophet ﷺ? How are you going to connect with Allah That which is in front of you, you still don't know what it is and who it is and you think you're going to go above and connect to someone you've never seen, a reality that you have really no understanding about. And then over to the creator of the entire created universe which you absolutely have no understanding about. But the one that you keep looking at you're wondering, who's my shaykh, who's my shaykh, who's my shaykh, who's my shaykh, who's your shaykh, what kind of question is that? You can't connect? As soon as you practice and you connect, you connect, you connect, you begin to feel the fires and the lights of all the shaykhs, all the Muhammadan representation, all of these lights and beatific realities till they take you to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that our whole life is to build that bond and that love with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and then he gave us a title in the last days to be from Ahbab. These were my Sahab, my companions but in the last days a group are coming that they want to see me. Who would be somebody who wants to see Prophet if he wasn't taught muraqabah? Who's Prophet talking about? That they're going to want to see me. If you want to see somebody you would probably be signed up in a school to teach you seeing. They didn't say, dream about me, they said they do everything to see me, one glimpse of me these are my ahbab. So this must be then an ahbab school of training. Because they're only interested in the people who love Prophet And if they sincerely love they're not going to stop at anything to reach towards that reality. And they're going to train on how to see their shaykh. And once they see their shaykh they're going to train on how to see and to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad so that they can receive that title of Ahbab Nabi the lovers. 
The Prophet described this category of lovers, in the last days they're coming and they do everything for one glimpse of me, not one dream, one glimpse of me. They love me and I love them. We pray that that dress and the blessing come upon us Ameen. and that this love and nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad come to dress us, perfect our character, perfect and strengthen our heart through all these oceans of difficulty. We're doing all of this now with all the panic that's happening in the world. We described 10 years ago that this stuff would be easy, meditation would be easy. But a day is coming when it becomes so difficult and so much difficulty upon the earth that it becomes more and more difficult to connect because now people are just frightened and thinking of all of these horrific things. So we pray that Allah give us the ability to make our connections, to make that understanding open the heart, to be dressed by its realities mm -hmm. as the world is going into a more difficult phase. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon. Assalamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.